One of the most ignored subsectors of technology is cybersecurity. Yet this particular sector plays a very big role in making sure that we are safe online and that all our tech interactions are protected and insulated from any attacks that may come off of it. But more importantly also is that we have fewer women working in cybersecurity. That's a big concern. And because it's our show policy to host a woman in every episode of our monthly output. We now have the right person just for that. Marianne Dano joins me later on to speak about this. But first off, as always, the tech news of the week. The Kenya Revenue Authority now seeks to introduce a new tax system integrating real-time cryptocurrency transaction monitoring. This is part of the authority's bid to tap into and catch tax cheats and criminals in Kenya's crypto sector, which has otherwise not paid much attention to. Cryptocurrency is a type of digital currency secured by cryptography, which exists on decentralized networks using blockchain technology. This is to make it hard to counterfeit or double spend the currency. An example is Bitcoin, the world's first and biggest cryptocurrency launched in 2009. Cryptocurrencies are mostly not issued by any central authority and are therefore free from government interference or manipulation. And while crypto and digital currency broadly are still not mainstream in Kenya compared to other disruptive digital finance services like say mobile money, KRA paints huge potential for the sector which has estimated 4 million users according to anchored figures. KRA estimates that Kenya's crypto market transacted 2.4 trillion shillings between 2021 and 2022, which is close to a fifth of the country's gross domestic product GDP. KRA also says that though the sector remains unregulated by reporting authorities like Central Bank of Kenya and the Capital Markets Authority, the earnings from the sector are legally taxable as per Section 3 of the Income Tax. The lack of robust systems to collect taxes on cryptocurrency transactions has resulted in a significant loss of revenue for the government. It adds that the new system will integrate with crypto exchanges and marketplaces to track and record transaction details like date, time, type, and value of payment. Crypto has mostly been used to preserve savings pay for goods and services internationally and make remittances, unlike banks and credit card companies which verify transactions using cryptocurrencies is seen as an easier way of transferring funds directly between two parties globally. Additionally, one does not need to buy euros or dollars in pay to use cross-border money transfers like Western Union. However, due to the decentralized nature of cryptocurrencies, the sector has been exploited for illegal activities like theft, fraud, and money laundering. Additionally, cryptocurrency prices are very volatile and investments require accurate price monitoring. Bitcoin, for instance, rose to nearly 65,000 USD in November 2021 before dropping to below 20,000 USD at the start of 2023. In Kenya, a bill introduced in Parliament last year sought to introduce taxation on cryptocurrency transactions and digital wallets. Very well, then that's what's been happening in the tech world. Time now for that discussion. Allow me to introduce our guest to us. Danu, good to see you. Before we venture into the technicalities of understanding how many attacks there are in a month or in a day or whatever, how did you end up in cyber security okay i don't want to say it is luck yeah but um <laughs> god, <man's it. laughs> god is a plug yes god is, god the is plug. a plug so <laughs> but anyway. um i've joined i've been in cyber security for from the beginning in my career mm -hmm. i started by training um uh, students in incubation hubs mm -hmm. in universities mm -hmm. and uh, ibm mm -hmm. then i moved on to oracle which mm -hmm. is uh as everyone might know, Oracle, and then I moved into cybersecurity at a checkpoint. Mm -hmm. So I've done everything from sales to marketing to training to the technical aspect of it. Ah, great. But, but, you know, one of the biggest campaigns right now, even the, what we front here at the show, is that we have to host at least one woman every other month so that we show the girls out there that it is actually possible. And that's and, very commendable. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. <laughs> but the thing is, 
from a very young age ladies are told hey this is not a man's this is not a woman's job this is a man's job and you do not have business being in cyber security i'll give another example i think in one of our briefings before we got on air i i mentioned that ladies are mostly told you can only do ui ux design mm. you can only do front end development but we get ladies who are able to do even back end development cyber security and the like first of all what is this notion that is being pumped down ladies heads that no cyber security is just for the gentlemen you can't handle this first it's a bias it's a very unfair bias around gender mm -hmm. and women in technology women in stem mm -hmm. um we have a kenyan joke that we make that is stems from juja boys yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know uh being that jquat is a very core technology university and yeah. then we assume that there are no ladies but if you go into jquat you find strong ladies in engineering yeah. strong ladies in mathematics yeah. courses yeah. strong ladies in computer science um i'm a woman in telecommunication engineering and I was the only woman in my class in your which class, yeah. is very funny that yeah. you get to bully the men yeah. in a in a way right because mm. the class cannot start without the lady in class yeah, sure. so it's a bias but women have a strength yeah women can multitask okay so away from being the fact that they can are supposed to only focus on um the beauty side mm -hmm. of technology UI UX mm -hmm. women are also able to multitask and do the technical work mm -hmm. the hard work and it's great to celebrate women in that uh, space even here in Kenya we have women who are heading startups that are technology biased exactly um if you look at uh, microsoft for example led by women exactly. right yeah. so uh, it's unfair to 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 base it on on gender let's also look at the pay compared to what men are being paid um the pay grades definitely are not the same um for one reason or another perhaps is this something you're familiar with is this something you've had in the industry and what's your comment general comment on it uh first i don't think it's only in technology uh i want to take the conversation away from technology okay. let's let's problem. talk about i don't know whether you remember the first time there was a woman uh, tout yeah. uh, matatu driver yeah um the comments that were there were i Eh uh, let me speak in Swahili. Ai mwanamke ataweza hiyo kazi ama atafukuzwa fukuzwa, you know? Mm. So already they are paid less, they are underlooked. Yeah. So it's not just even about pay, it's underlooking. Yeah. The types of jobs they are able to take yeah. uh, would be softer. You want the woman to be not on the kugongwa gongwa na matatu. Mm. You want them to be somewhere that is unfair. Yeah. Somewhere that is softer. softer yeah. So it's a bias. I think women should be paid the same or paid you know based on talent or based on skill not based on, on what physique or physique. any other thing yes or who is. they are yes great then how do we attract more ladies to come to cyber security particularly okay first it starts with creating demand for cyber security Red, let's not put women first let's create a demand for cyber security cyber security is one uh, is the third largest um talent workforce because you cannot have cyber you cannot have cyber security without cyber yeah true right and if you look into uh the Kenyan space mm. cyber in itself is growing because of where uh Kenya is in terms of the digital space for sure right we started with creating employment in Mpesa mm -hmm. so technically um what is it called mobile mobile money yeah Mobile money has now evolved into your seeing startups I think when we had the protest you saw startups rising to compete with Mpesa and, and the like right Yeah exactly that is creating digital the government has also created a cyber security space yeah. which is with cyber shujas with making sure that uh, digital and government services are mm -hmm. online mm -hmm. so by creating demand for cyber mm -hmm. which is digital mm -hmm. in the dictionary uh cyber is a characteristic of computers so being that you can use computers in different forms and ways then you create cyber security mm -hmm. so if we create a demand for cyber security then in there we create a demand for hiring women mm -hmm. in the space mm -hmm. 
And the beauty about cybersecurity is that you do not have to hire women in the technical space. You can hire women in the back end. Exactly. A role like mine, which is marketing, which is creating education, mm -hmm. awareness for cybersecurity needs, cybersecurity in the enterprise, in education. That way, when you create more demand, mm -hmm. you're able to uh, hire more women mm -hmm. and create more spaces. If it's women who are developers, women who are uh, threat hunters, mm -hmm. uh, penetration testers, ETCs, then you create that space for women. Great. Before we make a case for how to resolve the scale gap, just how many cyber attacks top of head can you possibly remember happen in a day or in a month? Um, Africa is the most targeted country at the moment, like, uh, sorry, continent at the moment, yeah. because we are emerging uh, where our counterparts in Europe already have their structures in digital, Africa is now morphing into creating a digital space. So you see countries like Kenya, Ethiopia, and why Ethiopia? They're creating an opening into their banking, into their telco. Yeah. Uh, you see Kenya, as I said, creating, giving um, government services, yeah. having a <coughs> digital uh, communication ETC. Mm -hmm. So I will not give the exact number, mm -hmm. but we are amongst the highest, highest targeted um, continents, and mm -hmm. Kenya being one of those. Great. In that case, then, how do we bridge that skills gap? A uh, skill gap begins with two parts. Um, I love this decade, and I love this area, like yeah. this area we are in the decade, the year, <laughs> uh, because education is not just something that is paid for, but it's free. Yeah. So skills gap starts with you, as yourself, in the Swahili word, we say kujituma. Mm. So you must send yourself to go and certify yourself uh, on Coursera, on Udemy. There are free courses that mm. are available, mm. and Checkpoint is one of those companies that offer free education okay. uh, in terms of security. We have a Jumpstart program that offers free uh, certifications. Mm -hmm. Also, um, creating awareness. So as women in cybersecurity, we need to become mentors. Mm -hmm. And there are programs like Strathmore is running that. Uh, there's Winters that runs a mentorship program for women in cybersecurity to drop the ladder mm -hmm. and also train other uh, students mm -hmm. and also people who are looking for jobs. Because as I said, cybersecurity is the third largest employer because of the opportunity. When you're touching your computer, somebody, sorry, when you're touching your phone, yeah. you, the minute you create a PIN, the minute you're busy sending that PIN number, yeah. there's somebody who's looking for you. So mm. there's a gap for people to continue to be educated about cybersecurity. We were getting there actually, just <laughs> breaking it down to the common wananchi, to the mamamboga, for example, to um, a, a, a border border guy. And, and I'm sorry, these people are abused a lot, especially yeah. from political circles. But really, the, the function of the show is just to also try and break down this complex, seemingly unreachable terms, cybersecurity, DevOps, all these things. Mm. Let's just talk about it from a very personalized and broken down perspective. When your child, for example, is surfing the internet or is online, what are those exposures that you need to insulate them from? Okay. Uh, before I get to children, let's talk about common mananchi. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I don't know, I'm not the only one, but I'm assuming Safaricom, our banks, yeah. constantly are calling us and telling us these words. Usipeane pin number yako. Yeah. Uh, Safaricom or the bank, da da da, will never call you mm. and mm. ask you for your pin number. Yeah. Why is that? Because there's somebody who is waiting for that pin number to call you mm -hmm. to rob you of your money. <laughs> I don't money, yeah. That is a basic layman's of cybersecurity. Yeah. Because what? Your bank is hosting uh, the, the data or your funds online, mm. and then there's somebody who's trying to hack into that. And sometimes it's not just hacking, because you know when you think of cybersecurity, you think of somebody yeah. wearing a hoodie yeah. in color black, da da da. No. It's just moto tu ako anajua, you posted your child, you posted your certificate, da da da, you've been using one password uh, from your Mpesa to your Gmail, mm. to your everything, that zero, 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 one, two, three, four, five passwords, that's what they're waiting for. Mm. And it's somebody just trying to be happy-go-lucky, right? Yeah. They're going, they're saying, okay, who you? I know it is Brian. Brian George is likely to use the password. 
uh, take over this. at 2024. <laughs> that is you. And then we are just there. Happy go lucky. So <laughs> <laughs> if that is your password, please change it. Um, I, and, and I don't know if it's just me, but even as age goes by, you use the same password for everything. I was talking yeah. to a friend of mine where uh, if someone was to hack me, it is the same password. My first boyfriend dash Yo. 2025. Yo. That is it. You just change yearly. <laughs> so we are highly <laughs> that is basic cyber security okay. when it comes to children and uh, we must uh, celebrate platforms like netflix that create that gap where yeah. if you're accessing if you're under this years old mm. then you're not able to access it. <coughs> parents should be able to uh, create that measure for uh, their children yeah. because they'll be targeted for the wrong things getting mm. the wrong kind of messaging and yeah, the wrong kind of content. media and content mm. so uh, parents should also take care of that mm -hmm. uh, and also because your child will give the password of your wi-fi to the neighbor yeah and that's it the minute i have the same remember the same password right yeah, exactly. so you have the same password on your wi-fi mm -hmm. which you're sharing with your children give who mm -hmm. and that's it that's Someone is good. yeah uh, great um you you've wedded me into this topic so let's handle it ai deep fakes and of course the bigger conversation about data protection exposing very important information, intimate information about yourself outside there, and not knowing the exposure that there is. Talk to us about this shortly as we close. Okay. Um, I think I'm, I want to quote one of your guests on TakeOver who said something that I actually never thought about, is the culture of Africans that we like to share. Yeah. And she even said, and she voided that, when you post something that you know people will like, which is like your children, mm. people will be very relatable to it yeah. but in the culture of africans we post entirely everything we post you post your graduation certificates mm. you don't even bother to Blah scroll or anything. Mm. somebody will take that and then the next thing will be watching on the news that somebody will graduated with a certificate x next thing is your university calling you because why you shared the same certificate yeah. so we need to create a culture where we do not post everything. And deep fix is starting with the fact that you are seeing people animating, uh, even presidents mm -hmm. saying words, yeah. because of the kind of media uh, content that we are giving. We are giving pictures of ourselves saying everything. I can imagine myself doing this interview, and somebody has other pictures of me. Will create another interview of me saying something else. Yeah. So we need to be very cognizant of what kind of information and content we give. And to what extent do we give it? Um, because to the nature of where it's going, we are going to create a, um, a, an army of yourself mm -hmm. online. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Great. Thank you so much, Marianne, You're for welcome. speaking to us about this. And I hope many more ladies are going to be inspired to become cybersecurity experts because that demand is there. Yes. All right. That's where we leave it at for that conversation, which ends part one. Part two comes up next. Don't go too far. Welcome back. You're watching TechOver, Africa's biggest tech conversation. Time not to know who our innovator this week is. Here is Startup of the Week. One of the biggest challenges affecting small and medium enterprises in Kenya is the challenge of lack of record-keeping skills in their farms. The majority of the small business owners do not have record keeping skills and their staff also have no proper record keeping skills to help them to improve their record keeping systems. The founders of Nakili, a record keeping application, saw this challenge in the economy and sought to solve it with its invention. Nakili is an all-in-one business suit uh, that helps businesses manage processes such as when you're talking about businesses like salons, um, we have checkouts, we have bookings, we have checkouts, and then they're able to see their daily reports, how much they've made in a day. At the end of the day, there's also the, the you want to see how much and stuff. You know, they're, they're normally paid on commission. Eh? So instead of going back to the books and just calculating manually, Nakili produces a daily report for 
the stylists. We have the reporting module that you can be able to see your business report, how many checkouts, how many checkouts you've done in a day, how much money you've made, what expenses you've incurred, how much money you've gotten, by which means there is Mpesa, there is there is Mpesa, there is cash, there is bank. People pay using various methods. Nakili has provided that platform. Gladys intimates its market acceptance has been on a sharp rise with the app serving the service sector mostly. For now, we have introduced this to the salon industry, okay. but we are planning to scale to other businesses like garages, okay. restaurants, car washes. Actually, we are also opening up for products because even in salons, you find they sell products. You can, maybe you want to buy an aftershave, you can get a service and at, at the same time buy a product. So it has provision for that. You get a service and product. So anybody, even in, if you're just selling products, you can still use Nakili. We caught up with Jessica Mariga, a nail tech business owner who has been using the application for two months now, admitting her experience has been satisfying, migrating from manual record keeping to automated services. I don't have to use books anymore. I can just use the apps, the app, and it helps a lot. So far, I like, I'm a very organized person, so it has really helped me. Yeah, so there's nothing to change, they're just perfect. Like, when we book a client, they get the whole information, what time they're supposed to be here, yeah, the amount of money they should pay, if they want a discount or something, yeah. It just goes straight to their phone and they're okay with it, yeah. And all her business needs to do is pay a monthly subscription, which is how the startup raises revenue. We have a number of uh, active users right now uh, on the platform and uh, we are hoping to grow that in the next uh, coming months. So currently we are under the Google Accelerator program and uh, it's basically a mentorship program where they do uh, the mentorship sessions and we have uh, access to technical support and also Google credits. Nakili is purely bootstrapped, although open to raising through venture capitalists. For now we are looking at, of course, bringing more businesses on board. Of course we are focusing on the you know, micro and uh, small businesses in the beauty industry. So we are looking to collaborate and of course partner with uh, other companies that do products around the beauty industry. So I think with that, uh, we'll be able to scale faster. And we are running on the Google infrastructure, which basically allows us to you know, plug AI solutions. And of course, the idea would be that uh, we want to do uh, customer churn prediction. Uh, there is also about uh, customer retention strategies. And then uh, we are looking at about personalized uh, marketing because now you, you really don't just want to market for the sake of it. Exa exactly. So with that, uh, you know, our clients are really able to do personalized marketing. And of course, the other things we want to really plug in as we move forward. Record keeping plays an imperative role in the success of small and medium enterprises worldwide. The small, micro and medium businesses are popular in urban and rural areas of Kenya and larger sub-Sahara region. A lack of acceptable record-keeping practice in Kenya affects financial institutions and the government agencies in terms of providing necessary support to them when they want to borrow money. Nakili hopes to change the story, one SME at a time. And that's our startup this week. I'll keep insisting, Kenya has the best brains in terms of techies, startups, innovators, and all that. If you want to argue, please go and wait for me at the reception. I will be there. <laughs> just kidding. Time now for our tech tip for DIY for the week, and then we just end the show. Hi, guys, and once again, welcome to this week's tech tip of the week. Today, we shall go over how you can save storage on your computer. So the first thing you want to do is go to your settings, then go to system. Under system, scroll down till you see storage. Right here you'll see the different things that are occupying your storage. You can start by going over the install apps and uninstall any app that you do not use and is taking up storage. The next thing is going to temporary files, then select Windows Update Cleanup and this usually takes up a lot of space. Then also select Recycle Bin. Then at the top, click remove files and these are saved 13 GB so far and lastly go back and under storage management you'll see storage sense make sure that you turn this on and this will automatically free up space and delete temporary files 
that's it for this week see you in the next one allow me to do this to end the show differently this time let me give Danu an opportunity to speak to the women out there who want to venture into cybersecurity and tell them a word. Danu, go ahead. The camera is yours. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Ryan. Um, I'll start by, as I say, the common word right now is tujitume. Yeah. Uh, first, women, we need to upskill ourselves. Yeah. Soma, soma, soma. Yes. If you have the right certifications, if you have the right um education yes. then you create the right route for jobs mm -hmm. so first thing i challenge the women to end there we take a course on cyber security any course absolutely yeah on cyber security then you'll see the doors will start opening for you very well there you have it thank you for making time for takeover we we'll do this again next week same place same time may tech live forever <laughs> <laughs>